One of the most common complaints we hear from viewers is their hatred of ads. Heck, we've personally worked in the marketing space for a combined four decades, and we don't enjoy them. However, as platforms continue to increase prices, streamers are left looking for ways to save money. Unfortunately, for many, opting for ad-supported offerings are one of the top ways to slash your entertainment expenses. So in this video, we're going to discuss where all of the major paid ad-supported streaming services stack up and which ones offer the best value. Virtually all of the major paid streaming apps now have an ad-supported option. At time of recording, Apple TV Plus is the only platform without ads in content. However, numerous reports indicate it's not going to stay that way. We tested all of the major services to see where they stack up relative to ads. This included on-demand TV shows and movies on all of the apps to see how they compare. As you can see, the best streaming services for ad-supported plans show as little as four minutes per hour of content. Hulu and Paramount Plus are on the higher end at eight or nine minutes of commercials per hour at time of recording. Ads on both of those surfaces tend to be more obtrusive. They have more ad breaks and they often last longer. In fact, it's not uncommon to see Hulu running two ad blocks one after the other, leaving you with three minutes of ads to deal with in each block. On the other hand, we found both Max and Peacock to be the top platforms for ads. It's not uncommon for a show or movie to start with a 30 second commercial and nothing for the rest of the content. If they do have ads, they're typically shorter and more unique. It is important to point out that if you're viewing content in Disney Plus under a kid's profile, that there are typically fewer, shorter ad breaks. In our testing, watching the same content under an adult profile and a kid's profile, ad breaks were one third to half as long. Disney Plus notes that there are no ads when watching content in junior mode. Content in that setting is limited to G and PG content. Despite many streamers hating ads, it's difficult to deny the cost savings. Platforms are paid to show ads, so they extend some savings to subscribers. At time of recording, here is the monthly savings you can achieve through choosing the ad-supported option versus the most affordable ad-free plan. As you can tell, Hulu provides the most cost savings. You can get the same content for $10 less at time of recording. Unfortunately, it's one of the worst experiences for ads. Netflix offers similar value and its ad experience isn't that bad unless you're watching a show that wasn't produced with commercials in mind. Speaking of Netflix, there is one important caveat. They recently sunset their one screen, no ads plan. That is a plan we're currently on and it's one of the few platforms we always keep. They did allow current subscribers with that plan to keep it. However, it's fair to expect they will eliminate it entirely in the future. They even pitch it to us regularly when we launch the app. It's no surprise either, as they make less money on someone like us. Note that at time of recording, Peacock's ad-supported plan costs $5.99 a month. However, Peacock has announced that plan prices will go up by $2 a month in July of 2024 for new subscribers and in August 2024 for current subscribers. Now that we've examined experience on the respective ad-supported plans and their associated savings, let's look at how this compares to linear TV. If you think commercials on ad-supported streaming plans are bad, consider how they compare to linear TV. Ads on cable TV are typically far worse. You can expect at least 12 minutes of commercials per hour, if not closer to 16 minutes. Dealing with four or five minutes of ads suddenly doesn't seem that bad, especially with the available savings. However, it's really naive to expect that streaming services will continue to provide light ad loads. Streamers make significant income from the ads. Ampere Analysis reports that they believe ad-supported subscription tiers will generate more than $10 billion in 2027. Remember, many streaming services still aren't profitable. Ads are one of the two ways they can make money, so it's safe to assume we're only going to see more of them. Exactly. We're going to see more interactive ads, ads on pause screens across all platforms, shoppable ads, and more. There's no telling how soon we'll see more commercials on ad-supported tiers, but it is coming. If that's not something you want, fast services are another fantastic option, but their ad load is typically closer to what you will see on linear TV. If it's true that streamers hate commercials, how many are opting for the lower cost ad supported options? Well, according to Hub Entertainment Research, nearly 60% of streamers will select the ad supported option if it means they can save four or $5 monthly. 
The December 2023 study also revealed that the willingness to pick the cheaper ad plan has increased over the past year. The reason is simple. With increasing rates, people are looking for ways to cut costs. If you have subscriptions to several platforms, the savings can really add up. Despite that, some people will pay more to avoid ads. The same study reveals 36% of streamers will pay more to go ad free. Now, while going ad free does provide additional features often in your subscription, it comes at a significant cost when you combine multiple apps. And that can take a real bite out of your entertainment budget and erode the savings you were hoping to get by ditching cable or satellite in the first place. Part of the beauty of cutting the cord on cable is the freedom to pick and choose what you want. Many people want to save as much as possible. Ad supported plans are one of the best ways to save currently. If that's not what you want, that's more than okay. Regardless of which you prefer, it's essential to stay on top of your spending. Analyze the platforms you watch every month or two. If you've not used a service over that time, cancel it and move on to another platform or go with a fast service. If you're trying to cut costs, don't pay for a service you don't watch. Instead, actively cut back your subscriptions to streamline your spending. Thankfully, it's still relatively easy to do. Well, that's it for this video. What's one frustration you have with ads on streaming services? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can get all the latest news and reviews when they drop. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.